today. He has some good rides uh, on today's programme, as you've already heard. What about the conditions, though, for uh, our first race, the Range Rover Evoque Trophy? Only a small field has been assembled for it, but uh, if you take out Cassiano, it, it, it does look, uh, I think, you know, quite close-knit, and there are a few others you could give chances to. Quite a busy parade ring here at Maidan as well for a car today where we've got over $1 million in prize money, so plenty of very, very good prize money on offer this evening at uh, Maidan. This race, though, is worth $120,000 US dollars. And uh, we are racing over 2,200 metres for it. The runners and riders are uh, pretty much being jocked up now. So we can uh, look at Ostinato there. This one trained over in Hungary. Ted Durkham rides here and uh, was uh, well beaten behind Alderley Paradise last time in what was a pretty slowly run race there over uh, 2,000 metres. So stepping up, back up a little bit uh, in trip per here. Let's have a look uh, at the runners and riders for this as uh, Ted Durkin gets legged up onto Ostinato. Ted manages to get uh, some really nice rides at the carnival for a variety of trainers. Also as well as, as Godolphin, of course, who continue to support him. And uh, there's a, another look at Ostinato. He's actually had one run, as, as Brett said already. It looks like he's kind of in a bit of condition for, to me, but maybe that's just how he is. Some horses just sort of look a bit burly. It doesn't necessarily mean that they, they need the run, but he's 25 to 1 on the international markets. There are many others preferred in this race. In fact, the entire field is more preferred than him, including this fellow, Royal Empire, who ran well last time in defeat behind Mushrek, um, who himself was well beaten in, in round two of, of the Maxim Challenge. So the two just got off this fellow, though, uh, in favour of Cassiano, which suggests to me that Cassiano is very much the Godolphin first hope. OK, we can take a look at number three now. This is the horse carrying the silks of his sign Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He hasn't won uh, for a fair while. He was uh, trained with Sir Michael Stout and then he went over to America with, with Daniel Pietze. He did actually win a Group 3 over there at Aqueduct. Um, been a bit in and out since then, but I think he's uh, got a bit of a chance here each way and it wouldn't be the biggest of surprises to see him finish in the money here. Same applies to this fellow, really. Jammer, I think he's got a decent chance, and I'm a little bit concerned that he won't get the strong gallop that he needs. He's the only course and distance winner in the field. That was uh, off three pounds lower than his current mark of 107. But he was second in this race last year behind Godolphin's Maidan specialist, Spring of Fame. And he didn't run too badly in, in Maxim Challenge round two last time. Number six is Jardim, who is another horse who hasn't really uh, been showing brilliant form, although he, he ran slightly better behind Ottoman Empire last time. Uh, over over 2,000 metres on the weather. So he's another horse who's stepping up in trip, but it doesn't really pose any sort of problem for him. But as I said, recent form, not that encouraging. Modern has only had one run here in the UAE. That came last year in the Nadal Sheba Trophy when he was fourth. That was on the turf, of course. And he had uh, His latest start came at Kempton in November in a run uh, where he ran behind uh, stablemate Spring of Fame. And Diana Cooper, the Godolphin representative on that day, said that will put him right for Maidan. So obviously the plan to, to come here uh, off the back of that run back in November. Lovely big horse, isn't he? Uh, this is the one they've all got to beat, though, Cassiano. You heard from Sylvester D'Souza uh, a few moments ago. He's got a four-pound rise for a victory here uh, last time, over 1,900 metres, where he beat Con Artis by uh, half a length. That was a decent enough effort, and he's, he's very unexposed. He's four years old. He's a Gaudin, which is quite interesting. He's by Soldier Hollow, but he's only had the seven starts, and he's won five of them. We can actually take a look at that uh, race from last time, out, as I said, where he beats uh, Con Artis. This is a good performance, uh, a bigger field than what he's going to encounter today so you could say his task is, is slightly easier. Um, he, said he, he gets put at £4 for this success, but uh, you know, he does it quite nicely, Laura, and um, you know, a, certainly a reproduction of this effort would seem him with a massive chance, and obviously Sylvester de Souza replacing Ted Durkin today. Yeah, he seems quite progressive, doesn't he? I can understand why he's a fairly short price favourite here. The time before that, when he ran behind Royal Empire, he was perhaps a little bit unlucky in running, so it all came together for him last time, and Sylvester de Souza has presumably picked him. Um, over, over the other one, so I think he's he's definitely a worthy favourite. Well, I just spoke to Brian Powell before we came on air, and he, he said he's obviously very keen on the chances of Cassiano. But we, he said we have got Royal Empire as a backup, so we can look at this uh, this this win for you. This, of course, was on the turf, um, and he finishes second here behind uh, Mushrek. He's on the inside rail. This was a deserved victory for Mushrek, who'd had a, a real couple of unlucky starts prior to this.
but uh, he plugs on quite nicely, Laura. Um, I suppose for me, my only concern would be that he's stepping up in trip because on this evidence, he, you know, he wasn't really finishing that fast, was he? I think he was probably outstayed in the end. No, I'm not sure he necessarily wants to go um, a little bit further. I think he'll probably be suited by return to, to the all, all weather. Um, this time he's never actually won on, on turf. Mm. I know we say often say that they ride pretty much the same, but he's very much been a, an all-weather specialist uh, when he was trained over in England and um, you know, managed to rack up a little sequence at Kempton. So I think that will suit him being back on the Tapita, but for the Godolphin couple, I definitely have got to go with, with Cassiano. He looks the one open to the most improvement. Yeah, I agree. He, he, he looks very, very progressive, and he, he had some smart form, didn't he, when he was trained over in Germany. I suppose of the locals uh, taking away Godolphin. You've got Jammer, and he's a horse who's got a lot of stamina, and in a race like this, you never know. We saw Adre de Vries a good effect on, on Izaj at um, Jebel Ali. He might sort of, never know, could make the running on this horse, and as I said, make full use of his stamina. I wonder if they can with him. It'd be nice to see either he or, or Tajaweed, another horse who's, who's done winning over a lot further than this. Tajaweed's won over 2,400 metres. It'd be nice to see one of those go on, and, and I'm worried there won't be much of a gallop in this. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they do employ different tactics on, on Jammer, who I always think of as a, as a hold-up horse. Um, as I said, he's, he's the only one who's won over this track and trip in the race. I'm a big believer in that as a pointer uh, towards, uh, towards a winner. And if you look at his start two uh, efforts ago behind um, Elderly Paradise, that was a, a really good run uh, in second there. Um, and say last time, he was out of his depths, really, wasn't he, in, in Maximum Challenge round two. This is much more realistic. Tajawi there, you can see him looking really, really well as he makes his way down to the 2,200-metre uh, start. He's a lovely individual, and he won the D-stakes up at Chester for, for Sir Michael Stout and sort of had Derby aspirations. He did actually run in the Derby, um, but, but without success, sadly. And, but he, he plied his trade quite nicely when he went uh, over to America. There is a look at some jammer there, Laura. Uh, a, a gouded son of Singspiel looks, looks really, really well in his coat there, has the visor on. Um, as well as the shadow roll. Adrian is really coming in for the ride who's a jockey in cracking form at the moment. And I just think this horse, he, every time he, he seems to win, he, I always think he, he, he tends to slightly slip under the radar and also win in, in, in smaller fields. And I think with this, with this eight-runner field, you know, it, it could, a bit like when Adley Paradise won a few weeks ago, they get the run of the race and, you know, it could be quite hard to peg back. Yeah, let's hope so. I mean, as I said, I don't think there's any real reason as why they can't make plenty of use of him. He's always been a, a hold-up horse or sort of restrained in, in the middle of middle of the group. Um, but uh, as you say, his last win, there were, he faced 10 rivals. Uh, that win came back in February last year when he beat Spring of Fame, a horse who he'd also been beaten by in this race, Jammer. But he still remains very lightly raced. This is only his 13th start this evening. He's had four wins. Um, and he's been knocking at the door at this carnival, so I think he probably does deserve a, a change of luck. Um, and there's a look at, at Jardim, who's had a slightly frustrating time in the UAE, really. Never managed to win from 11 starts so far. But his last run behind Ottoman Empire definitely, I thought, offered uh, some promise. That was a much better effort. Well, I can tell you that Cassiano has been awarded the best turned out uh, in this first race. So well done to the groom responsible for Saeed bin Saroor's runners. And that's a five. No, it's, it's, not, it's more than five hundred pound, isn't it, for the for the Dubai World Cup Carnival? Six fifty, I think. Perhaps Very generously now. sponsored by um, Malia Bastis Equiworld. There's a look at uh, Royal Empire, who'll be sporting the white cap of uh, Godolphin here, uh, racing from stall number three, uh, caught by Tia Filio. And there's Moden, who's a horse who I really like. When he was bought out of Sir Michael Stout's yard, he used to carry those silks of, of Bally McColl Stud and. He won the September States, which is a Group 3 race on the all-weather at, um, at Kempton. It's usually quite a nice race, uh, believe it or not, staged in September. Then he went and ran in the race um, last or last season just gone and finished place behind um, Dan Dina. That was a, a slightly better effort. He was only beaten a length in three quarters, but he finished ninth. And then, as, as Lord just pointed out a few moments ago, he ran well behind stablemate Spring of Fame in a listed race at uh, Kempton over 2,400 metres. Again, he's a horse who... I think he gets much further than this. So mm -hmm. if they go pretty quick up front, which I'm not sure they will do, but if they do, stamina once again will come into play and he could go well. But I was I was talking earlier on in the week and we were chatting about horses um, previously with Godolphin that have gone jumping. And this is one that I think should definitely be at um, Mr. Ferguson stable and heading to Cheltenham next month. Be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? We've had a few carnival winners go that way. Once more, Dubai, I think, was, was one of them, the staying types. And it's fantastic that, that whatever they do after they finish racing here, whether it's show jumping, dressage, whatever, Hurley, I think it's fantastic. They get a shot at a, a different career. So uh, four marks to anyone who takes on a, a racehorse and, and does something different with it. As we look at our trip for the Range Rover trophy, plenty of uh, Range Rovers and Jaguars and all sorts of things dotted around the course today, as you saw uh, at the top of the programme. It was nice of you to park your car over there and, and show it off to everybody. I don't have a Range Rover. I don't have a car at the moment at all.
you crash into people. But, uh, anyway, so what are we going with here? I think I'm, I'm going to stick with Cassiano. I'm being a bit wimpy. I did go with Jammer, but I've sort of mm. backed off him in favour of the favourite. I'm just worried that um, Jammer's sort of form as as he's reached his peak really and he's probably not got much more improving him and I think that last season was, was probably the best we are going to see of him I, I'd like to see him win and be, be great for Mubrat bin Shafia and his jockey I think Cassiano is the one they've all got to catch in all fairness on that win last time he's very very unexposed but just looking for a little bit of value although I'm not sure what sort of price he is internationally now but I, I'd, I'd like to have a little sneaky each way on, on Tajweed I expect him to finish in the money there yeah me too I've uh... Had a sneaky investment on Tajweed as well for some sort of effort. Let's hear from Jason, though, while we've got a couple of moments. Um, Jason, you've been sort of nodding along. Are you in our sort of Tajweed camp here as well for the each way? Yeah, it definitely looks a big value to me. He's got a lot of form. I think Doug's got a few nice chances this evening. Doug wasn't my actual selection. Has been jammer. I think this is the most realistic opportunity he's had this season. Hopefully it'll be a decent gallop, and hopefully Adrie Devee will be quite positive on him and kick for home sort of turning in. Adrie being in really good form of late, as, as Brett said. I uh, enjoyed a good afternoon at Jabal Ali last Friday. He's also been doing well at the, the domestic meetings here at Maidan, hasn't he? And, of course, we've got one of those coming up on Saturday. So maybe that could be another good night uh, for, for Adrie and, of course, for our local trainers. The Godolphin are represented as well. It will be interesting to see who does here as to what we think will happen and, and perhaps Jason suggesting that, that Jammer will, will, will make it and, and sort of trying to look at horses that, that, that are usual front runners. Royal Empire was a horse two starts ago when he beat Cassiano. He was very, very handy on that occasion. He sort of sat a little bit further back last time when he was behind Mushret, but again, he was quite prominent um, early on. And I suppose to, to a degree, you could even say Moden, is, he's a horse who's got stamina, so they could, could um, you know, make sure that comes into play in this race as well if he goes from the front. But it's, a, it's an interesting race, a small but certainly a select field for the opener here at Maidan this evening. It's the Range Rover Evoke Trophy. We're racing over 2,200 metres. So for the first time this evening, we say a very warm welcome to Dubai Racing Channel's commentator, Gary Capewell. Good evening, Brett. Good evening, everybody. Here's Austin Arto going forward. Thought he was a big price on the international market. And uh, the last one to go forward will be uh, Tajaweed. Royal Empire's in. So Tajaweed, the last one for the Range Rover of Oak Trophy. Uh, the 2200 metres. All in. And they're off for racing away. And Austin Arto reigned back as the stalls all opened. Royal Empire well to the fore and Jammer is a bit slowly away. He's pushed forward, one off the rail with the noseband and headgear to probably just show in front as they come down the home straight the first time. Royal Empire with the white cap, Modin with the red cap, out four deep Tajawi, jarred him on the rail. Cassiano amongst horses and three lengths to Austin Arto at the tail of the field. Edging across towards the inside, or at least trying to, leading them as they pass the mirror with a circuit to run by just under a length from the grey, jarred him in second. second. Jammer with the maroon and white jacket racing back in third and out three deep is Tajaweed in fourth. A length and a half to Royal Empire, followed by Cassiano, the all-blue Godolphin jacket and cap. And Ostinato with the light blue sleeves and cap is the trailer with 1,400 metres left to go. Swinging into the back straight, Moden and Kieran Fallon out in front. Jammer is racing a lot more handier tonight than he has done on his most recent outings in the carnival. In third is jarred him to the inside. Tajaweed, the blue and white striped cap on the outside of Cassiano in the middle. Royal Empire having to be nudged along. In Austin Arto's at the tail of the field. 1,000 metres left to run. The pace beginning to increase a bit. Moden in front as they head towards the final 900. Leads by two and a half lengths. Jammer in second. Tajaweed Cassiano and Jardim next as they head out of the back straight in the final 800 metres. Royal Empire and Austin Arto the back pair as Kieran Fallon continues to wind it up from the front on Moden with just short of 600 metres left to go. Moden in front by three lengths. Jammer in second. Tajaweed round the outside of Cassiano next in the field behind those is jarred him to the inside out wide Royal Empire and Ostinato the back marker as Modem leads them for home Modem in front 400 out from Jammer in second Tajaweed next is Cassiano drawn all Moden in front, 300 out. Cassiano with the noseband in the center is off in pursuit. Royal Empire with a white cap on the outside, three in a line. It's the boys in blue dominating. 150 left to go. Cassiano strikes the front from Royal Empire as they race up towards the line. Cassiano has his nose in front from Royal Empire. Cassiano will fend off Royal Empire by about a neck. And they pulled about four lengths clear from in third place. So it's a one, two, three for Saeed Vincerur, Austin Arto, and Jardim next, then Jammer.